With the ever-growing amount of transport and technology in the world today, it's important that we spare a moment to think about the environment and appreciate the measures that some companies take to keep our city a little more pollution-free. The Kyola bus, manufactured by Kira Motors in Uganda, is unique and in a class of its own because it is the first ever solar-powered means of public transportation. All right, so this week we are back to celebrating Uganda. We are back to that moment when we talk about what is made in Uganda, that very big proud moment here on Revda Panda. We are back with Kira Motors. This week we are talking about the Kayola bus. Now, I'll tell you something. The Kayola bus has been talked about everywhere. I've, I, I saw it on television, I've heard about it on radio, the, the newspapers, but no one has really given you the details. And that's what Revd Up is pretty much all about. And I'm always joined by the experts. Now, one of the experts who joins me today is uh, James Biancy, who, of course, is the customer experience expert. Yes, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm quite fine. How welcome, are you doing? welcome to set again. Good to be here. Well, what does that title mean? Customer experience expert. What do you do? What I do is basically to translate the customer's needs to the engineer so that as they design, yeah. they spec exactly what the customer needs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about the, the, the general feeling now within Kira. You have these three cars out. I'm sure you have plans for the future, which you cannot talk about right now. Uh, but but, but what's, the, what, what's the feeling like inside Kira? Do you guys feel a progressive? Do you feel there's a couple of uh, bureaucratic probably issues with government or within your own company that could be yeah, holding you back? Because those of us who love cars cannot stand something like that. Well, I must say we've, uh, we're at a point where it's really exciting, mm. first of all, to be in Kira, yeah. because we are growing every day in terms of capacity. Um, the numbers are growing, the numbers of staff, the technical expertise yeah. is coming on board. Um, we may have started out uh, at the university, but at the moment, as we grow into a company that's going to make cars made in Uganda, mm. um, we're taking on the right skill and talent and then uh, the, the environment we're operating within, that's uh, you look at government and the economy itself, it's a good time yeah. to be in Kira, I must say. Uh, I've just been looking at, uh, at some of the statistics. Mm. This is 150 kilowatts in yes. terms of its horsepower. Yes. Uh, a, a normal bus would be about 200. Yes. Uh, but let's talk about the torque. Uh, wh wh what's the difference? Because if I'm getting a big machine, I'm looking at horsepower and torque, yes. for starters. Well, for starters, this bus has a torque of uh, 400 Newton meters. Your, your average other bus out there will have a top of about 900. Now, for a proof of concept, of course, we are not going to take this yeah. onto rugged terrain or anything mm. like that. Mm. Our target was to, to show the world that it's achievable. Mm. In the event that we are going into mass production, of course, we would spec it to accommodate a torque that's relevant to the terrain it's going to take on. So in terms of uh, a prototype that we have produced, I think uh, we, we are there. Yeah. We would have to spec it higher if it's, it's needed mm. within the mass production. Mm. Last time we, we had Kira Motors, we had this, this Mark. Yes. Uh, of course, it's a sedan. It's a, but in terms of general operation, yes. uh, the, the general mechanical set out, yes. what, what's the difference between this uh, and, and the Mark? Well, the general difference between the Kyola and the Smark is that yeah. the Smark is a hybrid. That means it, it on top of the plug in electric drive, it has a generator, an onboard generator that would be engine which still charges a battery bank. Yeah. Now the difference is the Kyola is purely electric. Um, it has a 75 kilowatt hour battery bank, which gives you a range of about 80 75. kilometers. Yes. Which gives you a, a range of about eight, 85 kilometers mm. on the road. So if you're plowing the most common routes within Kampala, you're looking at about nine routes before you have to charge again. Now the beauty with it is that on top of that, you have uh, a range extender, which is the solar. Yeah. It, ex it extends the range by 12 kilometers in real time. As you move, it charges. It, it has an automatic switching mechanism where it will charge one battery bank as it's drawing power from the other. Yeah. Yes. I, I have two final questions for you. And uh, yes. th th this, this, this next question means, means a lot to me and, and, and the country. And, and you know what has been said by the president, by the ministers. The Kayola bus has a 60% local content. Yes. Now that's that, that's that's a very big thing. 60% local content. Yes. Uh, is, is, is it a plan? Is, is it something you guys have, have planned and say we, we are going to have this much local content at the moment? When you look at uh, the bus itself, mm. I would say the the only thing that was um, maybe brought in and integrated locally is powertrain components. Mm. 
things like the motor, the transmission, because we, we have not yet built capacity to produce that yeah. locally, or even the tires, because in our mandate, we are, we're not just looking at making tires. Someone out there will come and do that and supply it to mm -hmm. us. But the idea is you start with the body itself. This entire body is, is built in Uganda. These sheets are actually from a local supplier, mm. the body panels. Mm. When you look at the seats, they are designed and built locally. So when we talk about transforming people's lives, you are, you are, you are empowering them to have something they can bring on board within the automotive industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you look at the integration, the programming, it's all done locally. Our local engineers have done all that. Mm. So when we shoot to 60%, of course, the target is 90%. Eventually, when we go into mass production, we want to build capacity to be able to have 90% local content. Local content. Yes. As this show is airing on NTV, uh, this bus is in Kenya. Yes. Uh, this is actually the last shoot you guys are having. We're so lucky to have the first shoot with the Kayola, the last yes. shoot with the Kayola bus uh, before you guys to get, go to Kenya. What are you guys going to do? To, what are you guys doing in Kenya? Well, uh, come 23rd to 27th of May. That um, is tonight. That's <laughs> as, as, as you air, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> the bus is going to be the lead exhibitor in green mobility at the Sustainable Innovation Expo in Nairobi. Mm. Um, now, this is a forum where you have top delegates and, and, and environmental ministers coming in from around the world to discuss issues pertaining to the environment. Yeah. And the Kayola Solar Bus was, was, was identified within the region as an innovation that's relevant to that cause. Mm. So Ban Ki-moon himself, the UN Secretary General, will have a ride on this bus. Oh. So we are looking at such recognition, mm -hmm. inspiring confidence in yeah. us that the agenda we've set out on is yeah. the right path to take. Okay, yes. uh, so Ban Ki-moon uh, is, is going to ride on this bus. Uh, the president of Uganda has been on this bus. Guess who is next? Mm -hmm. Guess who is next to ride on this bus? Thank you very much. Guess who is next to ride on this bus, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> it's me now. Inside, the seats are beautifully handcrafted and covered in beige leather to complete the clean and simple aesthetic look, which was inspired by a waterfall. They offer perfect support and stability, but are comfortable and modern as well, bringing a whole new atmosphere of class to public transportation. All right, now one of, uh, like I said before, one of the more beautiful things about uh, the Kayola bus and having locally made cars in the country is uh, the other industries in the country do get to benefit as well. Uh, we've been talking about it's 60% local content. If you get into the car, uh, you realize all their seats, uh, first of all, very well finished, very well finished. It's leather and uh, this type of material is very easy to clean. Most of the folks will tell you that as well. Uh, if you look at the finishing on it, it's, it's staring well. It's, it's leather as well. And now this only means one thing though, to uh, to Uganda's economy. It means that uh, Uganda's uh, leather industry and everyone else who works within the leather industry or connected the leather industry uh, will now get to benefit. Because just imagine, just imagine for one second, if we got to have uh, the industry up and running and then there were 400 or 500 of these to be produced, what would that mean to the leather industry in this country? So, Kira Motors, good stuff. An electric motor fueled by lithium-ion batteries, powers the 35-seater bus and has a range of up to 80 kilometers on a single charge. The roof displays the solar panels which charge the batteries and because there's no fuel combustion, as in a conventional engine, it has a much smoother ride. It's inspiring to see Uganda starting to make environmental progress regarding public transportation. And hopefully, Kira Motors' Kyola Solar Bus is just the beginning. They have cleverly designed their bus in such a way that it is visually appealing and more luxurious than the fuel-powered alternatives, so that the switch to a more environmentally friendly vehicle benefits everyone involved.